Hey everybody out there in the internet world and welcome to my last video of 2011 and what better way to close out 2011 than with the Dark Avengers comic book review. That's right, we're reviewing the comic books that were released this past Wednesday, December 28, 2011. But before we get into that, let me show you the setup we have back here, which I'm never doing again. You guys, I told you guys I was going to use Punisher and Gambit. Never again. This thing doesn't want to stand for spit, and when he does stand, if you move him ever again, he falls. That's it. He's going back on the shelf, and that's where he's staying. Punisher's okay, but who wants one without the other? So, uh, I don't know. Either I'll bring Swamp Thing back, or I'll figure something else out. You guys know the clock. You guys know my good buddy Sentinel. Um, comic Book of the Week. We I did an unboxing with Spider-Man 258 already, so why show it again? Instead, I'll show you guys the old comic I bought in this stack, and that's Nightwing 54 with that awesome snowy cover. It's basically perfect for this uh, review, if you ask me, because it's snow, it's winter, we're in winter, I don't want to bend it. Oopsie, damn it, Sentinel, you and your rough hands. How many times do I have to talk to you about that? So, uh, that's the old comic book of the week. And also, as you guys can see, I'm sporting a new shirt. I got myself for Christmas a Batman shirt. And finally, as far as gifts go, I got the last season to complete my seasons of Smallville, the tenth and final season. That is one epic picture. Yes, it is. So, that's it. That's all for the miscellaneous items. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, it's been a very good Christmas, I will say that. I love this shirt. A lot of people say... Uh, now, I've been a Superman fan for many, many years, but a lot of my friends throughout my lifetime say I remind them more of a Batman. Uh, Hello, suffice and Happy New Year. Suffice to say, welcome here, by the way. And also, welcome, Kevin. Thank yeah, you very much. Back. Welcome back to the show. Where have you been? Thank you very much. So, anyway, um, been around, you know. Yeah, he's been around. Uh, people thought I reminded more of Batman, so I said, okay. I don't know. I have no idea why. So, uh, I got the shirt. It's a very nice shirt, I must say that. He's Batman. So let's get into the comic books this week. Uh, this is once again the week of the 28th of 2011, the last week of December, last uh, week of comic books in uh, the 2011. Uh, next week's comics start 2012. Yeah. Only independent book this week is the micro series of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the micro series number two Michelangelo. Yeah, yeah. Now, cover continues to be the same artist, however, the uh -huh. internal artwork is a different story. Right. And for the first time ever, I'm very disappointed in the artwork for yeah, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Looks a little long. Look at his mouth! Like, oh my god. I, I'm sorry, I had to complain about that. I oh, am terrible. not a fan at, of this artwork at all. However, looking over the artwork, the story is really good. Michelangelo, we all know Mikey is a partier. He loves to party. Yeah. And he's and he, he's thinking back to, on his brothers. He's thinking about how Donnie is very smart. You know, he works on computers and stuff. Leo is always um, training Mikey. And Raphael is always fighting. You know, like that all you got kind of person. So he breaks in. It doesn't break in. He, um, uh, this one guy who um, decides he doesn't want to go to this party, this New Year's Eve party, that's going on, uh, decides to opt out. We don't know why. He drops his uh, wristband that gets him in. And Mikey takes it instead. And they go. She, he goes inside and meets up with the girl that the guy was supposed to meet up with. Turns out they're robbers. And they were out to steal this jade... I think it's like a gem of some Stone. Kind. Yeah, it's, it's ra irradiated with something. I think this has something to do with Shredder, but they don't say it. So Mikey gets it, but he's a good guy, so he's going to foil their plans. And it turns out that that cat woman's really a police officer. Mikey helps her, saves the day, and then disappears without a trace. Um, it was a really good story. I would highly recommend it. However, the artwork is something you definitely have to be willing to look over, or else you are not going to like the story. I personally... Especially for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, went that extra mile and ignored the artwork and just read the dialogue, and it was really good. Next issue is Donnie. Yeah. I knew the last issue was going to be Leo. I always had that. I had that feeling since the beginning. Then you get some sketch art in the uh, back. But I gotta admit, though, after okay. yeah, after reading through most of the book, I kind of got like by the middle of this book, I kind of got used to the artwork. I really did. I just got used to it. But, once again, I'm a huge fan of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, so I went that extra mile. It really depends on your taste in art. If you're willing to look over the fact that it's different art than the first book, then you'll be good. 
However, I do hope that this isn't previews of artists to come for the mainstream story. I'm hoping that the mainstream story, the artist stays at least for two years. I think it's different artists change. for every uh, character. I think, I think, yeah, I think there'll I be different so. artists just for the characters in the micro series. Really good. Uh, I love why the Raphael was different. Raphael's was different artists. Yeah. Oh, okay. It could be different artists. Now we're going into Marvel. Not that much for Marvel this week. I want to throw out two oldies really quick. Uh, Thor, the Mighty Thor number seven, which is Thor's father Odin and the Serpent King uh, when they were growing up. I love the last page of this. Uh, I'm not going to do full reviews on these guys because I wanted to get these other the comics that came out this week done. So uh, Mighty Thor eight also, which was the introduction of Tanneris. We find out that it, Tanneris isn't who he says he is. He's really a troll. There's a spell. Nobody remembers who <laughs> Thor is. So it's up to Loki. Kid Loki, Loki to get people. Loki's a good guy now. He's a young kid instead of oh, always really? a young kid. The adult okay. died during Siege. This new Loki is a kid. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so he's trying to get everybody to remember wow. who Thor is, and it's not working. And at the end of this, he goes to Donald Blake, which then leads into this week's issue, the Mighty Thor. That's three three Thors in a week. Number nine. Um, in the end of this issue, we saw Thor somewhere, but he's dead. He's dead and he's, he's a god. floating somewhere in space, so to speak. Yeah. I'm not a fan of this artwork for one reason. The artist kind of draws the nose in, kind of like everybody looks like an alien. <laughs> wow. Oh my god, you're right. <laughs> Look at Thor. Thor, I can understand that woman, but Thor... So Loki's with Donald Blake, and he's trying to get Donald Blake to remember who Thor is. The All Mothers are fighting these, um... I oh, forgot wow. what they were called. Um... <laughs> What, what did they call them? That was them? a funny picture of there. I don't know, they're uh, ice-like uh, monsters. Is this it? Did mm. you... Is that it? Mm. Is that it? Mm. What is that thing? Yeah, I'm trying to figure Jotun... out. Giants of Joltheim. That's what Joltheim, it is. Okay. I think it's... Yeah, may as well say Joltheim. Or however you say it. I, they, they stress out these names. And basically, they're against Asgard. Everybody says down with Asgard. Asgard is uh, the, the the ice things, and they um, end up uh, fighting. Uh, Tanneris is fighting with the Avengers. The Avengers are acting like Tanneris has been around forever. Oh yeah, Captain America makes a few. And uh, they, in other words, they forgot about Thor, and Tanneris is who uh, they were. So in other words, everybody in the Avengers and in the world think that Tanneris was Thor for all these mm -hmm. years. In other words, they erased everybody's memory of Thor and Tanneris' image is what they um, replaced it with. Wow. Um, but it turns out, spoiler alert here, Tanneris is going to assassinate the Old Mother. That's his plan with the witches. He's going to be an, he's an assassin and he's going to assassinate the Old Mother who believes that Tanneris is, is really her son, but he isn't. So it's up to Thor, who is still dead, uh, to get back and save them, because we all know Thor is coming back. We saw Thor is going to be fighting Tanneris in like two yeah. months, so it's not a big spoiler. He's a god, so we really can't die. I'm just he saying. is dead. Wherever That's he is, amazing. though... That's, I don't know. I find that ridiculous, because... I know. He's just a god, period. God well, that's the die. comic books. That's what they In the doing. comic books, they claim a god can die, but he's going to come back. Yeah, I know that much. Mm. So, Loki takes a Donald Blake's uh, walking stick, and nobody knows why, and then he comes and he meets up with Silver Surfer, Oh, Silver and Silver Surfer says, wait a minute, let me see that stick. It's It doesn't belong just here, it belongs to here and another. And then he pounds the stick down, and guess what shows up? Mjolnir. Because oh, when Donald Blake does the no. thing, it turns yep. into Thor's hammer. And Silver Surfer says, yeah. who's Thor? And Loki's like, ah. And then Thor, in the other world where he's dead and losing his memories, he breaks uh, He breaks down and says, I'm not, we're not going to take this anymore. Who's going to stand with me and fight back? I won't tell you what they're fighting back from, but basically this, this gives you a good image of what they're fighting back uh, against. And that caught me up with Thor, and I'm liking it, and I'm looking forward to issue number 10 that's coming out next, next month, next year. Uh, I'll be honest, I feel bad I didn't start reading the series way back when, I, when it came out. I have the hardcover that's catching me up from 1 to 6, and then I have 7, 8, and now 9. Uh, I can't wait for Thor to be back, though. Um, it's actually good to see Thor in his own comic. I'm glad I started reading when Thor was actually put back. However, I wish the artist would change. <laughs> I hope not draw the aliens. aliens. <laughs> I, 
I hope at some point the artist does change. Captain America number five, concluding the first story arc of Captain America. Um, Cap is still stuck in the dream world, and Sharon is left with uh, Queen Hydra staring her down, saying, either put your guns down or I'm going to shoot Jimmy, and then they're going to be stuck in that dream world forever. Of course, that doesn't happen. She shoots Jimmy, and he's dying, so now the world is collapsing, and Cap is still fighting. Um, the Patriot, I believe his name is, I can't remember, I don't know why, but this character just does not speak to me. Every time I see him, it's like, oh yeah, that guy. Um, that guy we don't know much about. I'm, yeah, I'm trying to figure out. About. One day I'll remember his name. Codename Bravo. Codename Bravo? Bravo. I'll call him Bravo, whatever. He's fighting Bravo. Bravo takes um, away his super soldier thing and makes him thin yet again. It seems a very big pattern with the Captain America comics that they keep powering him down again. I understand that's how he like started, but come up, on. It's like a balance. Yeah, it's, it's, getting a, it's getting old. So in the end, Sharon goes to Jimmy, who's slowly dying. Please, if you, uh, this is your chance. Every kid dreamt of helping Captain America, so save him now. With every last bit of energy, I guess, he oh, had stalking. Cap and um, Bravo break through. Bravo gets captured. Lady Hi Queen Hydra gets away. And uh, however, though, this does leave a scar in Cap's mind about losing his powers yet again. So, uh, it was a good ending to a good story. The artwork was pretty good. I want to try to find a good page to show you guys. A nice splash page. That's, a good page. That's good. That's a good page. The artwork's good. Uh, story ended great. Uh, I'm going to stick around for the next story arc before I decide to drop or keep. Uh, by the way, guys, I do know that issue 6 came out this week. However, when I was making my order, I did not notice that right underneath Captain America 5 was Captain America 6 because they had variant, variant, Captain America 5, variant, Captain America that. 6. I didn't know. I mean, how many times, how, how often do comic companies release two issues in one week? I didn't know. So I do have Captain America number 6 on order, and it'll be here next week with uh, my other comics. I did not know. That Cap 6 came out, and I feel bad that I missed out on it because it's setting up for the next story, they claim. And new writers coming on board, and I did not know. So I only have this one this week. Really good, though. Captain America is still doing great. I do not buy and will not be buying Captain America and Bucky, so I can't tell you guys honestly about that. But Cap is really, really good. Uh, I just hope they don't do the powering down thing in every story now. That's kind of like... They keep doing that. That's kind of like, like Batgirl. Why do they keep following patterns? And it's kind of like Batgirl. They keep looking back now on when she was paralyzed. It gets old. Oh my and speaking of Batgirl, we're going into DC really quickly. A one-shot came out this week reprinting some Elseworld stories in a big, thick $6.99 uh, price marked... Oh, $7.99 price marked book. Uh, I read through it. It's all right. I'm being honest. It's... It's mediocre. I shouldn't... Uh, in a way, if I had to say one book I shouldn't have bought out of this whole DC Comics Presents, it would be this one. I, I really didn't find it as enjoyable as I thought. They didn't even do the whole Superman and Batman as women storyline. They just did the... Um, yeah, it was, it was kind of meh. Another book that's kind of meh was Legion, of Se Legion Secret Origins number 3. Uh, continuing with the origins, more people joined the Legion. Uh, Saturn... Um, who becomes leader? I forgot. Uh, Invisible Boy shows up as uh, a bodyguard. There's an Invisible Boy now? Yeah, there is. Yeah, no. there's an Invisible Boy. I don't know. I know there's an Invisible Woman. No, 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 Invisible Boy. Invisible. No, oh, you're thinking about. Um, Fantastic Four. Yeah, Fantastic yeah, exactly, Four. Exactly, yeah. That's and um, Cosmic Boy becomes leader of the Legion of Superheroes because uh, Brand is leaving. That was his name. I had to find his name. Brand is leaving. Uh, not leaving, but he needs. He wants somebody else to lead the team, so it's up to him now, and he's leading the team. So, um, pretty good story. Okay. Um, it was okay. I don't know. I'm just uh, I'm 50/50 on this one. I I'm gonna stick around because there's only three more issues left after that. Um, yeah. However, Legion of Superheroes is doing pretty good. Okay, moving along. Teen Titans number four. Now, I did not like Superboy at all, and you guys know I dropped it two Sorry, months ago. Get something. It's okay. Uh, now, Superboy is guest starring in the Teen Titans, and the Titans did not have a name for their team up until this point. 
Uh, Wonder Girl is confronted by Superboy in New York City, and what you see on the cover is basically what happens between them. Uh, Kid Flash and Solace show up at Red Robin's door, and it's kind of weird that, you know, Tim is very open with his secret identity to oh, all these people. Yeah. yeah. He's very oh, open, yeah. very open oh. with his secret identity to all these new superheroes. Yeah, it's all I know is he's too open with his secret identity to all these new superheroes that he's apparently meeting for just the first yeah, time why now. Why does he do that? Like, it was just... funny. Kid Flash actually stole his uh, Robin costume when he was working with Batman and turned it into a Kid Flash costume because his other uh -huh. costume broke, ripped. So that was funny. Uh, my favorite page, and I'm going to spoil this, was the last page where Superboy's getting, uh, 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 basically beating the living daylights out of Wonder Girl. Uh, she's losing pretty bad. And Red Robin shows up and says, we're the Teen Titans, bitch. And, well, not like that, but we're the Teen Titans and, uh, to be continued. Wow, Superboy and Wonder Girl? So, I oh, thought this was a beautiful to... splash page. Um... I'm looking forward to seeing what happens next now. Um, I don't like Superboy, so if they kick Superboys, you know what, from here to holy hell, one up on the Teen Titans. Uh, mm -hmm. What happens from this point on is up to there, but I'm not collecting Superboy anymore, so that's not an issue. But I'll stick around with this because I like Red Robin, just like Red Hood and the Outlaws. I like, the, I like Robins, apparently. So I'm sticking around with Teen Titans. Maybe things will start to, uh, the team will start to get together and things will start working out. Next okay. is Michael's book. All right. Justice League Dark, number, number four. four. It still uh, is keeping me on board and interested. There was a lot of controversy. Like, uh, as you saw in the last issue, uh, the witch was going to kidnap June. And apparently when Dead Man uh, attacked the witch, it was known to be a faker. So the real Enchantress, or Enchantress, however you say it, is still lurking around somewhere. Uh, Dove makes an appearance where him and John Constantine are talking. Her and John Constantine. Yeah, her and John Constantine. And he's telling Dove that June is trouble and that she, that you should really be on lookout for her. And, um, and I was trying to figure out what uh, he was talking about. And then this that made sense. There are more than one Junes that are uh, lurking around and killing other people. So we don't know who the real June is. Right. Um, and and I was, the artwork's really still uh, amazing yeah, cool. and all that. Um, what's your name? This one. Zatanna? On. No, I think Zatanna. It is Zatanna. Yeah, yeah Zatanna, yeah. Uh, I don't she, know my own character. <laughs> She fights off all the June Wars and uh, she makes a escape route and all that. And uh, it was a great fight, though. And uh, it, it, it was really more along the lines of uh, which June is the real uh, June that they're looking for. So now Dead Man is going to go meet up with uh, John Constantine, I believe. Oh, no, Shade, Shade, I'm sorry, Shade to ask uh, him a favor, even though Dead Man's not on board with trusting Shade, and just try to figure out about what's going on, and, uh, very interesting of, uh... Yeah, don't show the ending, though. Yeah, Dead Man gets possessed by something, and the next issue is One Must Die to be Continued. I am still on board with that, guys. I mean, the artwork's fantastic, as I said before. Looks fantastic. Yep, and, uh... I can't wait to see what happens in issue five to see what happens with. Not going to spoil the end, but the ending you'll you'll be in a wow phase. Really quick in the Flash number four, there's no Flash really until the last two pages. It's all backstory on how Manuel, um, how all those Manuel clones came to be, and how Manuel can actually self heal. He kind of reminds me of Wolver like not even Wolverine, like Piccolo. Where he chopped off his arm. Yeah, then he did. Oh, no, yeah, he, yeah. he regenerates. He regenerates. That's it. So oh, it's mostly backstory, which then leads into some present with him and uh, Iris. Iris is in a small part. I keep forgetting her name. Yeah, these blonde names girl. are just like... not a blonde girl. Patty. Thank you. My God. By the way, this is the variant cover. I did get the. Um, Whoa. <laughs> so out of my head. I did get the variant cover to Flash number four, so I do have a variant this week. 
Um, so he takes Patty along with him to, uh, he wanted to take her with him, because now he's on the run, and she says, I'm not a coward, I'm sticking around. She sticks around, but he runs away. He gets caught by the, um, his clones again. Then Barry wakes up. Who knew? He didn't get shot in the head. His instincts kicked in, and his head moved this way a little bit, and he just got grazed, and his head slammed into the wall. Wow. So it looked like his brains got blown out, but they really didn't. Changes into the Flash and runs off to be continued. Pretty good. No Flash really in this issue, but I'm sticking around for the next issue. Looks really, really good. So, mm. see what happens next there. That's really it. There's very short, you know, they ended this year with very short, like, to the point end uh, stories this uh, week. All Star Western number yes. four. Now, I thought after uh, reading this, I was going to drop this issue, but uh, apparently I am not because there are two things that I like about this issue. One is the artist is wow, the artwork is amazing. Uh, Going page by page, are you? No, I'm just looking for a good picture I want to show, like the artwork. Basically, it's like uh, Jonah Hex is uh, fighting these uh, three guys who uh, attempted robbery. And, yeah, I'm trying to remember his name. Thurston Moody, yeah, thank you, okay. Thurston Moody is asking Jonah Hex to, uh, that there has been a uh, missing child, and he asks him if he wants to go, and he says that he will, because Jonah Hex, I guess, is a uh, person that cares about children and all that. Him and the detective... They team up and they find out from other people that there's this uh, person, they don't give the name, that has kidnapped more than one child. Jonah Hex goes into this uh, orphanage, at the, that nun that was there, I didn't trust her that much, but they, they want to talk to this kid and when I saw the child I was like, wow, how he was all like skeleton and all that. And he was like pretty much almost dead. and. Uh, then they go into the investigation where they meet up with this guy who looks like Kingpin. I don't know what his name is. Just a zombie like Kingpin. Yeah. And then he makes a Superman reference. Are you faster than a speeding bullet to Jonah Hex? Really? You're using a Superman Any more El Diablo? Oh no, it's this new uh, thing. Uh, what was it called? Oh, that's ask. a weird ass name. Next issue is the Batcave, by the way. Yeah, there is no El Diablo. I was going to mention that. Uh... Ah, the Barbary, uh, Barbary... Barbary Ghost. Ghost. Yeah, the Barbary Ghost. I never heard of okay. that. Barbary. I can understand you getting rid of El Diablo, <clears throat> but don't put any more things and making it yeah, and apparently, And apparently it's sticking to three ninety nine for the next three months at least. I did it. Especially uh, something like Barbary. Up to seven. Yeah. But the next issue where, uh, this Barbary. king... I'll call him the kingpin, king, kingpin, the like guy, because we don't know his name who is uh, holding Zombie a gun King. to the detective, and uh, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I am on board for issue 5 of All-Star Western. But I'm telling you now, if it goes a little slanted, one more issue, then it will be gone. And that's all I have to say. Okay. So that's all the comic books. Uh, we have them. five minutes left. I've got three books left. I say we cut here, and oh, uh, really? we'll come back for one or two. <laughs> okay. It's better that we uh, end it here, because I don't want to have to get caught up in the middle, because the next three books are really, really good. So, well, not one of them is not really, really good. It's just good. The other two are pretty good, so I want to have time to talk about them. So we'll see you guys in part two. So see you there.